I'm James Hake. This is the Hake Report. It's Friday, November 8th, 2019. And it's November 8th. Isn't that when people normally vote? I don't know. Maybe it's usually a Tuesday. I'm all confused. But I'm live in the fourth hour of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. It is 9 a.m. just after 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. TheHakeReport.com. JLPTalk.com for Jesse's stuff. So let me quickly. I have some things to get to. And, um... I didn't get to do my show yesterday. It was disappointing. But I got to um, do a little bit of prep. So I have some things to present to you guys. I finally, finally, finally got some clips for you. I have... Um, but first, let me show this these pictures. Because at the top of the third hour, Hake News on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, I reported about Glenn Greenwald. Greenwald getting hit. Slapped. And Greenwald is an okay guy. I mean, he's, he is homosexual. And he's so-called married to a so-called husband and politician down in Brazil. He's an American, I think. Comes off, comes off as an American. He was one of the sane people about the uh, Russia hoax. But um, he gets into a fight with this guy at Brazil. And this guy, this so-called journalist, attacks him, slaps him, tries to slap him. So I have a couple of pic- those pictures just to illustrate what I was describing because they were both on a radio station, and this guy in the suit and white hair is attacking Glenn Greenwald, the American whose face that you can see a little bit. And it's like a girl fight almost. You know, like they're holding each other's hands. And then he actually does, they do stand up, both of them, and he slaps them. Uncouth Brazilians stay out of Brazil, right? There is video, but I don't have it. Maybe I'll get it for Sunday just to show you guys. Um, but he said... This uh, one whose back is turned to us was suggesting that child services should take the children that this homosexual couple adopted because they're both too busy working, is the accusation. Um, Whatever. Not my fight, but unclassy Brazilian and not good to be homosexual and not good to be adopting kids. Speaking of that, (coughs) excuse me. I have this story of this clip of another so-called conservative talking about it's great to adopt kids. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to your calls. Appreciate you guys calling in, Earl, Chris, and everybody. 888-775-3773. But before I do that, because I want to get to these clips, I have Ben Shapiro on Jesus, and I have Nick Fuentes on the Holocaust, allegedly, right? So let's go right into clip 11, Joel. From uh, YouTube, via Moreno James, who's maybe a Catholic or a Christian, maybe seems to be offended. But Ben Shapiro clip saying, I think he thinks basically that Jesus, quote, was a rebel who got killed for his trouble. Something like along those lines. It's about a minute long. Listen to this. Jewish point of view, where we don't believe in the divinity of Christ. I right. think that the, there he can make an argument that the... The Gospels, which were written, he was just a signifi- prophet. And, right? signifi- no, no, no. We don't I even just, believe he was a prophet. What do you think he was? What do you guys? I, think I, he I was? mean, I, what I what do I think he was historically? I think he was a Jew who tried to lead a revolt against the Romans and got killed for his trouble, just like a lot of other Jews at that time who were crucified mm-hmm. for trying to lead revolts against the Roman and got killed for their trouble. So he became legend and story, and it became a bigger and bigger deal as time yeah, went on. Yeah, he had a group of followers, and then mm-hmm. that gradually grew, and then do you think there he was, was resurrected? A, no, that's not. That's not a. A Jewish belief. Okay, I just want to check. Yeah, no, we're, we're not into, <laughs> not we're not into, into the miracle stories. No, that's, that's no? not, no. You don't have any miracles? No, not, not, not by Jesus. Right? No? They're, they're ones There's in the, the Old ones? Testament. Yeah, you've got Moses splitting the sea and all that. What do you think happened there? What do I think happened there? Yeah. Well, I'll go with the Maimonidean explanation that there was, a, I mean, it says in the Bible there was a strong east wind. Uh, so there's a naturalistic explanation for a physical phenomenon. That's extra strong. <laughs> So what you heard, who you heard, he was, he was on this podcast called, uh, well, it's Joe Rogan was interviewing him. This guy, Joe Rogan, who's like, seems to be like an atheist. But um, this was an intellectual answer. 
this answer about who Jesus was, it's a made-up assumption that he tried to lead a revolt against the Romans. It's a lie. It's uh, to be expected. And is it blasphemy? I don't know. It's consistent with his bad takes. On, uh, that sound reasonable to snooty blind mockers, I think. You're not into zombies? That was Joe Rogan, the other podcast host. He's a competitor, right? Rogan is a pro-atheist. He kisses, I saw him kissing up to this atheist mocker named Richard Dawkins. Silly old man. Um, early, so earlier this week I had shown a clip of this, um, Conservative activist, nationalist activist, Vincent James, who's been on the Jesse's show multiple times, confronting the Daily Wire author, Matt Walsh, who's also been on Jesse's show one time, who's Christian, supposedly, for working for Ben Shapiro, because Matt Walsh is like a standard conservative Christian guy, anti-abortion, but also kind of anti-Trump, for working for Ben Shapiro, who retweeted attacks on the Covington Catholic kids, Initially, Shapiro, by the way, I saw in a speech Shapiro was giving yesterday that he said that he helped those Covington Catholic kids behind the scenes afterwards. So initially he was wrong and then he supposedly made it right. I don't know. But Vincent James was offended and calling it blasphemy and saying, I wouldn't work for a man who said something like that. And um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it blasphemy? Um, I did see some of Ben Shapiro's speech last night. He was answering the famous, some say infamous, but I say famous Q&A questions from Nick Fuentes' Groypers. Nick Fuentes was on Jesse's show earlier this week. To Charlie Kirk and others, TPUSA guy, standard conservative, but pro, okay with the gays, right? I'll I'll play that clip for you guys later. So um, Ben Shapiro is more conservative on at least his social issues than Charlie Kirk. Because he's not for the gays. But he wants government to stay out of the marriage thing. So to me, that's kind of a cop-out altogether. But he is like a so-called small government, whatever. And he called... But here's one thing. He called the America First people bad people. Well, he called them alt-right. And alt-right, in his mind, is so-called racist. He believes in racism. He also called them garbage human beings or something. These guys that were... Confronting Charlie Kirk and Rob Smith and uh, Matt Walsh and others. So I guess the, they are bad people, which is funny because I've heard Ben Shapiro say, you, you don't call people that you disagree with bad people. Because he criticizes the left for calling the right bad people. But the left are the bad people. And so I think you should be calling people bad people if they are. Anyways, the Democrats are garbage human beings. I wonder if he's ever said that. But anyways... Um, I finally got this for you guys to hear. So that's a Ben Shapiro so-called outrageous clip. Here's another so-called outrageous clip from Nick Fuentes, who's more like nationalist. People call him alt-right. He doesn't call himself that. But he seems kind of like that. Whatever, right? Who cares? Um, American nationalist, right? Here's Nick Fuentes on the cookie question. And I had, I had referenced this, and I was like, oh, I, for- kept on, I forgot to get it to you guys. So I found this on a channel called Whole Foods Market (laughs) on YouTube. But it's Nick Fuentes on his show reading, apparently reading a super chat from somebody. And it's kind of making a mockery of the Holocaust by making an analogy to it for using baking cookies. And by the way, Ben Shapiro quoted this last night too. So listen to clip 14, Joel. It's clip 14. Listen to this. Max says, if I take one hour to cook a batch of cookies and Cookie Monster has 15 ovens, working 24 hours a day, every day for five years, how long does it take Cookie Monster to make six million batches of cookies? I don't know. That's a good question. (laughs) Certainly, uh, oh, no, no. It doesn't really sound correct to me. Wait a second. It takes one hour to cook a batch of cookies. And you have 15 ovens, probably in four different kitchens, right? Doing 24 hours a day, every day for five years. How long would it take you to make six million? Hmm, I don't know. It certainly wouldn't be five years, right? Uh, The math doesn't seem to add up there. The math doesn't quite seem to add up there. I don't think you'd result uh, in six million. Maybe 200 to 300,000 cookies. 
And I think the Red Cookie Association said something like that, probably two hundred to 300,000 cookies baked, probably. And in addition, you know, in this hypothetical, I imagine that if you took aerial photographs over the kitchens, you would need to see certain smokestacks to release the smoke from baking the cookies. And the smokestacks would project certain shadows but I guess they're not visible in the aerial photographs taken over the kitchens. Moreover, if you look at the soil texture, it's really not deep enough for mass cookie storage underground. Um, and so there's a lot of things. You know, in the cookie kitchen, they say that the ovens are uh, wooden and they have windows on them and they're not totally secure. And the ovens that they use... They, they actually did sort of an ad hoc use of that particular kind of oven, even though they made a perfectly good design for ovens for a different purpose, for delousing. I mean, you know, for something else. <laughs> so none of it really adds up. I don't know. It just kind of doesn't really make sense, this, this crazy cookie analogy. Uh, you have to really, you have to be, that's sort of an esoteric uh, story. That's from Cookie Right. You wouldn't understand that if you're just sort of passing through, if you're just a normie. So six million cookies, eh, eh, I don't buy it. That's all irony. I'm an irony bro. That's all irony. Uh, you know, I love and respect everyone. Everything that the government says is true. So that's what's called irreverent. Irreverent is a word that um, liberal writers use for when people are disrespectful to other religions and people, right? It's called irreverent. But it's not really, it's actually playfully disrespectful, right? So, Ben Shapiro quoted that last night, and this is the same clip that that guy, some guy, shared to smear uh, Nick Fuentes as a Holocaust denier, which, who cares, right? And a so-called anti-Semite, which doesn't exist. And so that, this mainstream guy, Sebastian Gorka, and I went off on Sebastian Gorka last week or this week, and the evil group ZOA, Zionist Organization of America or something like that, they, they hate everybody. Want Fuentes banned from Twitter. And Nick says that, by the way, that he's been banned from PayPal. Same with Owen Benjamin, banned from PayPal. Because they're kind of edgy people. Call me a disinter disinterested millennial. I don't find either of those clips, either Ben Shapiro or Nick Fuentes, particularly outrageous. It's like, who cares? But if you're offended, call in. Or if you disagree with me or whatever, anything you have to say about it. But, um... Real fast, before I get to the calls, because I did tease this, so I want to show it. Charlie Kirk is kissing up to Dave Ru Rubin and the gays. What the? <laughs> and I have a bad habit of saying what the now. <laughs> I'm even finding myself saying it under my breath. And I picked it up from Jesse, picking it up from Joelle, and it's so bad. But here is a, a I have, I found this in a tweet from Seneca Roca, right? This user says, the leader of the most well-funded... An influential conservative youth organization has no problem with gay marriage. In fact, he thinks it's cool that gay people can get married and adopt children. This was a position Barack Obama considered too radical and far left in 2008. Hashtag culture war. And this is a clip of, from January of 2018, over a year and a half ago, almost two years, I guess. This millennial conservative on Trump, social issues and religion, Charlie Kirk... Uh, in the Rubin report, and it's it's uh, Charlie Kirk, the TPUSA guy, being interviewed by Dave Rubin, who is a homosexual liberal, classical liberal guy, um, pretty big on YouTube. So listen to Charlie Kirk kissing up to. He calls himself Christian, and he says it's the per on a personal level. I'm not for it, but I think it's great that you guys do it, anyways. So listen to this. Clip 12. One, one final point is what I think is the position that needs to be articulated better is I have no problem with, you know, gay marriage, whatever. Like, I believe marriage, one man, one woman. That's my own personal position, right? But I'm never going to tell government to have someone live a life. I think it's cool. You're married. I think it's great. And you should have all the same tax benefits, adopt children. It's great. Yeah. Right? But I you, feel the same way about you. Well, it's fine. It's like, whatever. Like, yeah. But that's, that's more of like a generational perspective. Here's where... Um... That's just shocking to me. That he's that um, blasé about it. And it just shows that he's blind and kissing up and people-pleasing. And this is a shame that people have become this way. So, did you catch that, Joel? What? Oh, he didn't. He wasn't paying attention to the clip. 
Uh, Charlie Kirk, just being all happy that the gays can adopt children, which is a shocking statement to make. He definitely was, I don't want to say kissing it, but pleasing. Yeah. Instead of pointing out what he knows is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It was so bad. And this is what these guys are calling out. And I don't think even Ben Shapiro would agree with this Charlie Kirk guy saying it, but he's not going to call him out as a garbage human being. And this weakness is what's causing the country to slide. So, what a shame. My voice cracked. What a shame. Anyways, let me quickly get to some calls, and then I'm going to get to Dan Crenshaw. He's nice. He's a rhino. He's new. And it's a shame. So, um, Earl out of Michigan. Earl, how are you? Fine, fine. How are you doing? Doing fine. Hey. Um, you know, I was just going to just reiterate that, uh, listening to the testimonies, uh, of some of the, the, uh, Trumpian people that, <laughs> that, uh, testified against Trump, uh, it's inevitable that he will be impeached. Uh, but uh, he, a defective uh, sentence won't remove him. But he will be impeached. So he'll be impeached by the House is what you predict, but the Senate will not remove yeah. him? Right. Because the House is controlled the House is controlled by trash Democrats, very corrupt people. Disgusting yeah, people. And, and, the, and the Senate is controlled by feckless Republicans. Feckless means good? Feckless means awesome? No. no feckless, feckless means decent? Means, feckless means, means you're stupid. Oh, okay. You know, feckless means you have no All right. I don't, no I don't care as long as the right yeah. thing happens. I'm happy. Well, it ain't, it ain't right. They're just scared of him. You're scared Even of if Trump? they don't like him, they won't, won't remove him. No, that's fake news. People aren't really scared of Trump. It's, it's just that Trump fake is a man news. of, Trump is a man of authority. Know? Trump is a man of authority no. and love for the country like no other president or politician in our lifetimes. And so they know that he doesn't need to be removed. That's ridiculous. He shouldn't even no, be impeached. They, they, the only they, reason they, that he's being impeached is Trump. because he's, in, he's draining the swamp. He's, he, drained, no. uh, he drained Elijah Cummings. <laughs> kind of. He drained... Yeah, that's uh, another stupid statement. That's another Comey? stupid statement that uh, you say... He because, drained Obama. Uh, you worship, you worship <laughs> Trump, and there's there's nothing. Trump I don't know can if do. I worship him. He's just a good guy. Yeah, that's close to it. I don't know if he he's was, a good guy, he but is, he's a, he is your second god. Ain't no, se- no no such thing as second god. Well, to you it is. You worship him. You, you don't know me. Feet. You you can't say a bad thing about him because you because you 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 kiss his feet if he told you to. But, uh, and? uh, yeah, the, uh, the devastating testimonies by, uh, people like Kent and Taylor and Yovanovitch and, uh, and Williams. I don't know who you're referring to. That, that, uh, that testified under oath. You see, that's the difference. They testified under oath. That's dumb. Uh, they, people lie under oath all the time. Don't you remember Bill Clinton? Yeah. Bill Clinton yeah, lied under Sunderland. oath as president. <laughs> um, uh, Sunderland did, did it too, but uh, he had a change of heart. Now he clarified and said, uh, "Well, I and I remember it is a, it was a quick pro, a pro quo." So, ain't nothing uh, wrong with a little goes, quid pro quo. Oath, That's called diplomacy. Hey, um, the only person. The hey, only Earl. Person that has intest- hey, wait a minute. The only person that has testified under oath is Trump. Because if he ever testified, they put him in the prison for a hundred years. You know who but hasn't? You know who else hasn't testified? Is Joe Biden? Joe Biden hasn't testified, <laughs> but he's such a liar and a snake, and everybody's on his side, anyways. Put, Earl, do you drink? Do you drink alcohol, no. Earl? No. Wow, good. Yeah, so you can't use that against me, or or smoke. Nice. So, 
All these uh, rumors. You just are, smoke on hate. Uh, no, I smoke on on facts, <laughs> on truth, <laughs> on documentation. You smoke on mm. hypotheticals and wishful thinking. Hey, you're the one. Opinion. You're the one with the hypothetical. You came in here and saying that Trump is going to get impeached, but he's not going to be removed. Nothing has happened yet. That's yeah. hypothetical. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You may turn out to be right, but it's still hypothetical. Anyways, Earl, I got to go, man. Adios. By the way, real quick, let me ask you one thing real fast. Did you hear the clips that I played? Yeah, I don't care about those. All right. You a Christian? That's for God to decide. Remember that. No, that's what the human beings decide. No, God decides it. In the Bible, human, humans, human beings call the Christians Christians. And uh, it's like I told Jesse earlier, he can he can say who's a Christian, who's not a Christian, but that's just his opinion. Blazing he's Hogs, God, he don't make the, he don't make the final determination. Blazing but, Blazing Hogs wants to know if you hugged a white person today. Blazing Hogs, <laughs> yeah, I want to know if Blazing Hogs <laughs> hugged a hog today. <laughs> All right, Earl, good question. We'll ask him. All right, thank you, I man. Tuck. Talk to you later. He called me, Baby Hitler, amigo. And he also called me Nazi sympathizer. I'm not sympathetic. I don't even know what the Nazis were really about. There's so much disinformation and lies in the media today. They're calling people Nazis that are not even Nazis. <laughs> so I don't even know what the real olden day Nazis were about. So I can't be a sympathizer. So um, let me quickly get to Chris out of Arizona. Chris, how are you doing? Hi, James. I'm great, as usual. Right on. <laughs> hey, um, I'd like to quote something from the seven steps, if that's okay. Seven guaranteed steps to spiritual, family, and financial success guide Correct. by Jesse Lee Peterson. Really, really good book. Really is. Bondinfostore.org, guys. Or call the yeah. bond. 800-411-BOND. Call in line. It's working right now. Go for it. Let's hear it. The anxious, it, it's the um, section on patience. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be in a hurry. Most people live in their imagination. They feel as though they've got to have it now, and if they don't have it right away, they are a failure. They are unwilling to grow into success. Love it. Very nice. I really like that book. And hey, speaking of that, I gotta read my chapter. We have to read a chapter. Read we have to read our chapters for the the Bond Entrepreneur Academy. Through, we, right. we go through that book. We just read through it. It's nice. So, do you teach? No, I'm I'm a pupil. Pupil. Really? Of the Entrepreneur okay. Academy. Yeah. Are, are there any women in the class? No, this is an Entrepreneur Academy for young men. Just for men. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Well needed, yes. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to say that... Um, Today's show more than made up for the fact that you guys couldn't produce yesterday. Yeah. It was really fantastic. Um, KT from D.C. That was a um, nice call, huh? We don't have any Popeyes around here. <laughs> but on Fort Huachuca, I can go on Fort Huachuca and get a special... Um, I have to get a special ID for Fort Huachuca. Okay. And, uh, I plan to go there and... and they have one there. They have a, I mean, just because of what KT said this morning, I'm like, okay, <laughs> gotta give that sandwich a shot. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> well, it's military men. Do I have to worry you, about that? No, I'm just be careful because you're going to Popeye's, right? <laughs> <laughs> And actually, military men are not always men nowadays, even though Trump wants to solve that issue. Yeah. <laughs> Please. How far we've yeah. fallen. I remember as a kid, yeah. they were talking about gays in the military and women Don't in the military. Yourself. And now it's like they want transgenders in the military and that they're erasing transgenders. Oh, I have a funny clip. Anyways, um, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, be, I'm just saying be careful because it seems like a lot of drama around these Popeye sandwiches. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I'm going to have my, uh, yeah, guard up. Okay. So um, I like that Jesse had uh, Gretchen on the other day. Oh, yeah, wasn't that nice? I heard her, yeah. I knew, I heard him call her in, but then when I heard her voice, I'm like, what? Who's that? 
<laughs> she's so demure. She's so, um, gosh, he should have her on once a month or however. Nice. Can fit it in, whatever. And um, Nick, yesterday, since Jesse couldn't do the show and you couldn't do the show, Nick did a really good job. Yeah, he did. You know, off the fly with his phone. I really enjoyed it. Cool. Right on. Um, did you happen to catch the premieres of the 2014 episode clips? I didn't because okay. I was on the phone with my sister. All right. But who put that fantastic video together with the chicken sandwich flying through the sky? That was Joel, and I have some feedback for him about it. Um, just some constructive criticism for him about it. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, you know what? The reason why I have that is because I was listening. I wasn't watching. And so when you're watching the video, of course, you get it. But for those of us who listen, um, it would be nice to have just a little clip about, like a little news blurb, such and such, stabbed to death over yeah. Popeye's yeah, I get or something that. like See, that. A little uh, quick I'm, little thing. I'm like working around. Yeah. And I heard something and I quickly looked at the video. Yeah. And it just had me rolling and laughing. Nice. <laughs> I mean, so I'm calling today. I, I don't, I don't want to make a nuisance of myself by calling all the time but i was laughing so hard today with jesse's show and crying too i mean well not really crying but like it's just so well done you yeah. guys are just really on top of it and i loved it yep so i appreciate that chris green sandwich today <laughs> okay good luck <laughs> all right thanks don't get addicted <laughs> i hope not too all right much, um what was it your caller said? MSG, uh, sodium, 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, take care. Sodium. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, you know what? I got to get to these callers, um, and then I got to get to Dan Crenshaw. I got to get to Dan Crenshaw. Um, Dennis, out of Massachusetts, first-time caller. How are you doing, Dennis? How you doing? Uh, Fine. Nice to talk to you. Right on. I got a... <clears throat> uh, interesting. I got... <clears throat> excuse me. And I got some for Earl too. You know, when when Trump moved the uh, the embassy into Jerusalem, yeah, the uh, so called called Christians in America, they went crazy because they they think Israel was this and that. Yeah, and it's always this always. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean by crazy? Like in a positive way, like the Christians were celebrating, or? The, the Christians well, were no, I mean, were mad. What I mean is that that they think because they still think that they chose like they were chosen. Oh, okay. By God, right. And what's in fact like that Ben Shapiro? Uh, what, what he was talking to that guy. This is what Judaism is. They don't. None of them believe that Jesus was even a prophet. Oh yeah, right. You know. Yeah, when Ben Shapiro was, was talking to Joe Rogan. About right. Jesus was rebelled fact, or something like that. The Jewish Talmud says that Jesus was uh, boiling in semen. I heard that. It's kind of gross. I don't even like to repeat it, but they do, it, it does say no. disgusting things. Yeah. And, no, and there and is, I, and I, just, I, I did read, to be, play devil's advocate, not that I want to advocate for the devil, but I yeah. did read some um, Jewish scholar said that they're not actually referring to Jesus in that thing. They're referring to another person. But other people say that it is Jesus, yeah. so I just leave it, it as a, I don't know. But it, right. it does. It but it's a disgusting okay. thing to say about anybody, to be honest. It is. Um, but anyway, that's yeah. what they think Anyways. of them. They, they, they can't stand them. Because, you know, what they were looking for was for somebody to overthrow the Roman Empire. Then Messiah is about, is about, was a political thing then, and yeah. a political thing now. That's true. But... Yeah, they wanted yeah. a po- that's right. Jesus was uh like a spiritual leader. Right. To to, he to heal people's spirits thing. so that they would Right. He came he, he was a, a spiritual thing. And they wanted a political my, my kingdom messiah is not of this world when he told Pontius Pilate. Yeah. But uh another thing but anyway, that but yet Christians are it, but there are Jewish Christians right. in Israel. Yeah, you know, so I, you know, but then uh, uh, what I read is that they're not treated too good either. Oh, but, okay. Uh, I got one thing for Earl if he's listening. I heard him mention these people uh, that come out with sworn affidavits and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, 
about the impeachment? They said under oath was all their opinion. They felt that the president should have did this. Yeah, exactly. Nobody ever heard any any quid pro quo. Yep. What, he, what they need to understand, Earl, you're listening. What people need to understand that he's the president of the United States. He can appoint or withdraw anybody he pleases. He's the president of the United States. Yep. There was no quid pro. He might be impeached by the House. Democrats. But he's going to run in 2020 and win again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to how it turns out. Appreciate it, yeah. Dennis. Very good inputs. Thank you. I, uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Have a good one. You as well. Let me quickly get to Jay out of Los Angeles, California. Has a good question. Jay, what's up? Jay! Jason? Jason! Jason! <laughs> it's not Friday the 13th, I don't think, right? Jason! Okay, I'm going to put him on hold. He has a really good question. Um, so, uh, let me quickly get to Dan Crenshaw, and then I will get to Jace, Jay or Jason and Kevin and all you guys. Dan Crenshaw. So, um, we kind of liked him, right, at one point. Thought that he at least defended Trump a little bit. That was nice. But we had the warning signs, even with this Face the Nation clips that we played way back in November 2018. Um, we, slash I, have had very low standards for so-called conservative Republican politicians who take very relatively weak stances that they take, right? And so we have a low standard for them, and I have this clip 13 that I want to play, Joel from Face the Nation of, you know, back in November 2018, after the elections of 2018, remember the so-called blue wave was supposed to happen? Whole bunch of Democrat women and POCs got elected to the shame of the people who voted for them and to America, because it's a disgrace to have these people in office. They shouldn't be there. Um, but we also elected, or Tex some people in Texas elected, I think, Dan Crenshaw, who was a veteran who lost his eye in some war or something. <laughs> um, or whatever, right? <laughs> it's a reference to the SNL thing. The Pete, whatever his name is, who is suicidal. His dad died in 9-11. But um, Dan Crenshaw agrees with Democrats not liking Trump's language. So listen to this. You'll hear him defending Trump, but it's a very weak defense because he doesn't like Trump's language about the media, and Trump is telling the absolute truth about the media. So this is about a little over a minute and a half. Listen to this. You talked about this, actually. It's important that we lead from example, that we lead from the top, and the way that our woman. president is I, I agree with leading. you there. I agree with you there. Style is one thing. If you want to criticize style, I'm with you. Right. But to say it's an attack on the freedom of the press, that is a very bold statement by calling the press the enemy of the people. Uh, yeah, I don't that like that is language. Literally. OK, so the style. No. I, I, I agree. And, I don't like that language. fake news, of course. No. Yes. And I'll give you another example. His um, rhetoric about uh, erasing trans people in our country. That uh, he's never to said me, that. That's, uh, that's... Well, it it it, uh, it appears that he is discriminating against the LGBTQ community. Oh. And uh, I think that's uh, troublesome. I think it's worrisome. Uh, we all have uh, These communities. These people are in Congress. In, I mean, across this country. And um, I mean, and we mentioned it at the beginning, ripping what children away from their parents' arms. Those are all ripping things that worry me uh, that I absolutely feel that we have to have well, oversight on. how about just, on. you know, so the, line, the CIA and the FBI and the State Department and all of those important institutions that are but, fundamental to how our democracy so works. What, what I hear a lot is you don't like what he says and sometimes, okay, but and you don't like the, you do, we have policy I, I, disagreements, I, but you're saying undermining democracy. And I, and, and I want to caution us because those are very bold words. If we have policy disagreements, let's focus on those policy disagreements. And I'll be happy to discuss those at any point. But this is what I've been getting at kind of all week, which is we tend to, we tend to go right at the jugular. Right? We it. say you're undermining democracy. You're a bad person fundamentally. That's not always true. We have policy disagreements on a lot of these things. It is a true thing that those women that we heard talking who are in Congress, to our shame, are bad people fundamentally. That is a true statement. <laughs> Uh, so Crenshaw and Ben Shapiro like to shush people in, from calling each other bad people, especially the left calling the right bad people, right? Or a bad person. But the left are bad people. Um, and so are most of the right. 
I mean, look at Crenshaw. He was agreeing with with the attack on Trump for attacking the media and calling the media the trash and enemy of the people that they are and attacking the CIA and FBI and our institutions that are so important to us. Um, and then Ben Shapiro, of course, as I pointed out, turns around and calls the so-called alt-right, which they don't even call themselves that anymore, garbage human beings. Hmm. For being so-called racist and so-called anti-Semitic. So anyways, back to Crenshaw. He's a politically correct Trump hater. And I have some more, even worse stuff coming from him from 2015, I think it was. Um, I saw this from that activist guy that I mentioned, Vincent James, who was Catholic and all mad at Ben Shapiro for calling Jesus a rebel who got executed for his troubles. So Congressman Crenshaw, in 2015, I think before he was congressman, right? Because he was just elected 2018. He said, he said, quote, and I have these, show the, these Crenshaw Facebook posts. They're screenshots from, I don't know if they've since been deleted. No, no, no. Uh, not that, but there's some that say Crenshaw, I think it says Facebook. Hopefully I have it in there. Um... Let me know if you see him. But he said, the worst thing modern Christianity stands for is anti-homosexual marriage. And that was a quote that I happened to see from Vincent James, so I investigated. According to the Houston Chronicle, he was comparing Christianity to Islam. And the, so the full line is, let me see if I put it in there. Because I want you guys to see it. Okay, so it says Dan Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw. Do you see him in there? No. Dan Crenshaw. It's in the main folder. Refresh, because I do see it in your folder, Joel. Let me know. Okay, cool. Yeah, here it is. Look. Okay, so you can zoom in on this and then kind of scroll down slowly. So he's saying, he's saying, um, quote, the worst thing modern Christianity stands for is anti-homosexual marriage, which he should say is a, a good thing, right? Which is a far cry from sex slaves and Sharia law and beheadings. So he's defending Christianity by, in a sense, by comparing it to how, how harsh Islam is, right? But he should say, he should have said that Christianity is the right and centrist, well, like that word centrist, position, not the radical homosexual position, which is pro-same-sex marriage and really anti-marriage, to be honest, nor the radical Muslim position, which is killing the gays, right? The Groypers are right uh, that this brand of so-called conservatism has conserved nothing. They're so right about that. And he, this guy, Dan Crenshaw, is even worse with context. Put those back up. So I got this from CRTX News, Conservative Republicans of Texas News, these screenshots. And so he's like defending Christianity and whatever, saying that there is a problem with Islam. But he's saying, uh, if you scroll further down, he references Trump's quote unquote insane rhetoric and says Trump's insane rhetoric is hateful in the same. Look, Trump's insane rhetoric is hateful. Yes. But worse, it takes away from much more important conversation, the reform of Islam. This guy is ridiculous. And then he says, um, on the one hand, you have, yeah, it's right here. On the one hand, in the middle of the paragraph towards the bottom, on the one hand, you have uh, idiots like Trump. And the, what is he saying about idiots like Trump? And on the other, you have equally ignorant liberals who refuse to acknowledge a problem at all. The rest of us in the middle are getting sick of it. He is not... This is that fake intellectual, uh, fake reasonable, I call it fake reasonable, this intellectual stuff. Far left radicals do this. They pretend to be uh, calm and sane voices. Oh man, I lost Jason. Um, classic examples are Pierce Morgan. When Pierce Morgan went up against Alex Jones and Alex Jones was going kind of crazy against Pierce Morgan. And Pierce Morgan pretended to be calm, the calm person, even though Pierce Morgan was wrong. Trying to attack our gun rights, Second Amendment. Pierce Morgan should go back to Britain and stay there and shut up about politics, except when he's defending Trump. That's nice. Um, or Don Lemon versus Sheriff David Clark. I should get those clips for you guys. Um, David Clark called him out and said, there's no such thing as police brutality, I think, and you are part of the problem. He called out CNN and Don Lemon specifically. 
a homosexual guy on CNN, right? And Sheriff David Clark is a pretty decent guy defending, saying that there's no such thing as police brutality. And um, Don Lemon pretended to be that sane, calm, objective journalist. And that's what how this guy reminds me of, that fake thing. And I heard a lot of this guy, Dan Crenshaw, his Joe Rogan podcast. There's that Joe Rogan guy again. Um, interview a few months back, and he sounded so quote-unquote reasonable. It's very deceiving, to be honest. Because it's not really reasonable. It's the de- that's the, de- the deception of weakness, softness, um, intellectualism, rationalization. There's that word from yesterday's uh, premiere. Rationalization is a word that I learned from uh, 2014 from the book Making Gay Okay, which was not about pretending that gay is okay, but how they started making everybody pretend that homosexuality is okay by that Catholic author, Robert R. Riley, who was on the Jesse Lee Peterson show back when I was producer in 2014. And we released that premiere, by the way, the full... A little clip had been on on Jesse Lee Peterson's channel for a while, but now the full interview is up on the Jesse Lee Peterson YouTube channel. Also on BitChute. BitChute. B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. BitChute.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. All of Jesse's channels, all three of his channels are on BitChute. So, um... I'm gonna get to calls, but I'm gonna... Hopefully if I have time, I don't know if I will. But Dan Crenshaw wouldn't even address... He's been confronted by these groipers, these guys that are nationalists, and confronting these people about their, you know, blind... Supposedly blind support. They, they argue it's blind support for Israel. I think it, they may have a point. Um, and he won't even engage, he will not even engage, which is a shame, because if he would have answered the question, it would have answered some questions, it would have been nice. But he wouldn't engage in it. And I have a little bit of that, I may have to push that to Sunday, so. You can ask me about it if you don't hear from, hear about it. Let me quickly get to some calls though. Kevin! Out of Connecticut. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, I was, um, I was, uh, it, it was funny about how when you guys were talking about it's okay to be white. I yeah. actually called up Westcott. You called that what? Westcott? Yeah. Who's that? Because it happened at, at, at Westcott. Oh, it's a Westcott, university over there? It's a university, and it's actually, I, it actually is in my, in my state, and I used to live in a town. Okay. It's a pretty good university. I called them up. And check this out. I called them up and I asked them, well, can I talk to some of your supervisors? You know, one, people that are in charge. And she says, I'm in charge. She says, I'm one of the supervisors. I said, well, I have a question for you. Uh, I heard about the sign going around around the university that they're putting, that they put up that it's okay to be white. And yeah. I asked her, why was that wrong? Yeah, and w- then she and then then she told then she put me on hold and says, "Where well, I'm going to get public relations." And then she gets back, <laughs> then she comes back on the phone and says, "Well, now I'm going to directly from public relations to the police department, the university campus police." I Ridiculous. Investigated. So is the FBI. Then she gets back on the phone and tells me, "Well, um, I'm not going to direct you to police. I'm going to direct you to public relations." And then <laughs> I hold on. They hanged up on me. I call back. They won't take my call. <sighs> They're, these people are so such cowards. They're yeah, so well, evil. Yeah, yeah, but they're not lying though about what what Islam stands for when it comes to women. Women basically have no rights. What do you mean? In Islam, they have no rights. Oh, yeah. And the thing about and the thing with the uh, the thing is, they they have a problem with putting up a sign, but it's okay to spray paint a cop car. Yeah, they've been and and put trash on it and throw water on them all kinds of madness Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It's total it hypocrisy Yeah, it's full of it full of it every day every day all day on TV a lot of college professors are Antifa um, I was gonna call them activists. They're more like rioters assaulters people that yeah, yeah be, Assault you, you innocent what people. they want to do in California. Yep. That they've been doing in California, they want to, they want to, they want to make the, they want to make the white man, the bad guy, and everyone else the good guy. Yeah, 
But so then stupid. again, they're saying that we took their land, but Native right, Americans so. came here during the Ice Age, and they were actually slaving their own people and scalping their own people, too. Yeah. They had black slaves, too, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, black slaves. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my question about yeah. reparations, right? Let's say, for instance, and I'll let you go on this one. Let's say, for instance, the white man was the slave owner, right? Uh-huh. And the slave was the black female, and he had sex with the black female, and now she's going to have his baby. Who pays the reparations? I think the baby has to pay himself. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, let's say if the black slave owner, right, is a black slave owner. Who pays reparations now? Yep. It's ridiculous, man. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go. You have a good weekend, sir. You as well, Kevin. Appreciate you, man. Take care. No problem. Take on the liberals every day, man. All right. Let me get to Samuel out of South Carolina, first-time caller. Samuel, how are you? How are you doing today? Doing I'm fine. Doing. What's up? Hey, I'm actually um, watching your live um, stream right now on YouTube. Right on. And I see a lot of people in the comments saying that it's okay for gays to be gay. Well, I just want to say that you guys are complete betas. <laughs> True. Yeah, and it's not It's not good for them. It's not good for Brandon, anybody. And I, I want to shout out Brandon, and I want to tell you thank you for answering my call. Yeah, thank you, Samuel. Yes, sir. Anything else, man? Nope, that's all I had to say. All right, all appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, you guys you guys who are okay with the gays, not good. Nature. Say it again. They need to return back to their father's nature and forgive their mothers. Yeah, Don't, stop being so emotional and kissing up to the worst in human beings. Pretending yes, like sir. you're like you're compassionate or pretending like you don't care. Anyways, man, oh. take care, Samuel. All right, you too. All right. Let me quickly get to Johnny out of Tennessee. How are you doing, Johnny? I'm doing all right. I'm ready to hear your answer, man. All right. What's your question? Was Jesus a white nationalist? I don't know. You? Couldn't say. <laughs> I mean, Why do you ask? Know. Huh? Why do you ask? Because the other day I heard you say white nationalism White nationalism meant that you wanted a majority white country since it was founded white. Yeah. So what does Jesus want? Because that's what we follow, isn't it? I think that Jesus would want what's right, which would be to keep America white. All white countries? Yep. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hilarious, man. That's why I tune in. But, you know, it's I'm funny. Just... It's funny that, you know, the... um. There's this smear campaign against whites as they stole the land, right? And yeah. um, and now there's these colonizers, right? These colonizer right. illegal aliens and so-called refugees are in, coming in, colonizing the white countries and taking it back away from the whites, and the whites are too weak to stop it. It's yeah, such a shame. Colonizers are who in who's in power, not the ones coming in. No, the, the people. Are, yeah, the people in power are evil. Mm -hmm. Colonizers for Satan. Yeah, all these Democrat, all these Democrat women colonizing, colonizing the the government. Right Disgusting, huh? Do, are, are you going to vote for right Trump, now? Johnny? You going to vote for Trump? Me? Yeah. Me? Yeah. No, man. I was at, no. Beta male. That does not make you a beta male. Yes, man. it does. That makes you a complete beta male. That's pathetic for a grown so man. The, you, sound all, country, you sound all. You sound all. D live coming. D <laughs> you sound you sound all like masculine, have this deep black voice, and then you're not even gonna vote for Trump. What a waste of masculinity. Pathetic. Most of the country What happened to you? Oh my god, can I get a word in? Yeah, go for it. Most of the country will be beta males. I don't dispute. I do not dispute. <laughs> That's the problem. If you're going by if you're going by your definition. Yeah, of course. It is. It is. You don't agree. You don't disagree. You disagree right. that most of the country is beta. Look right. at how we're being taken over by evil. Do you agree that we're being right. taken over by evil? We have right. glad. We have glad yeah. enforcing ten percent uh, representation. Idea, Look, I'm gonna give you a good idea. You but hold on. Answer my question right. before you, I'll let you give me your idea. But answer my question. We have glad, which is a radical homosexual group, wanting ten percent of the of the cast that's on TV to be LGBTQ and 
we're just being overrun and taken over by evil. You had agree, the I women's agree, march. Yeah. yeah, so don't you agree then that that a significant portion of the country is beta? You have to be beta to let that happen. I don't know the beta and the alpha deal, man. I just don't, beta, I don't okay, know. beta and alpha means weak versus strong. I know what it means. I know what it means. All right. But it doesn't apply in every single thing you do. It doesn't apply. Okay, but but listen. Weak, moral weakness is what's allowing this to happen. I guess you think the world just going to be perfect all of a sudden, I guess. No, I think that men should become perfect. Yeah. Perfect? I disagree. Are you Christian? I guess you can call me Christian. You referenced Jesus. You said, is Jesus a white nationalist, or at least on behalf of America? (laughs) I don't think he's white, though, but go ahead. No, I'm not saying that he's white. I don't know, but he's. Um, I mean, you gotta be white to be a white nationalist. No, you don't. You don't. Nuh-uh. You can be Chinese and be a white nationalist. Yeah, if there's a lot of people that want America to stay white. So other races want America to stay white. Yeah. And you have sources on that, like somebody told you that. I mean, I hear from a few, you know, reasonable-minded POCs that. Um, that say, yeah, America should stay white. I mean, it's oh, it's few, common few, sense. Not not like a million or so. Right? There may be a million. I don't know. I don't know that many people, but I hear from hey, people a lot. I'm gonna get off so you can uh, ask somebody else a question, but I want to tell you one thing. Yeah. You and Jeff should write a book, put all your little sayings in it, put all your little <laughs> quotes in it, and uh, put out put your theories in it, your philosophy, so people can read it and then burn it afterwards. Okay. Nice. Right on, man. Right on, man. <laughs> Take care, Johnny. <laughs> uh, let me quickly get to James out of Texas. James, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, I was trying to call earlier. Yeah. Some interruptions. Okay. Yes, I was trying to call talking about tax rates. Tax rates? All right. I don't know yeah. much, but I can I can take your question real fast. Go for it. Well, you said you supported... Uh, Tax, uh, that the rich should have the best tax benefits because it would have helped the business. Well, yeah. I can see your point on that, but mm-hmm. there's still stagnant wages and there's still jobs being moved overseas. And I don't think that tax rates on the rich is going to really help that much because wages are still stagnant and we haven't seen... Yeah, the, uh, okay. In- there's There's multiple things that are going to help with with uh, jobs in the country and shipping jobs overseas and part of that is um, Trump getting rid of the regulations and things because the the regulations make it uh, cost prohibitive for business for competitive businesses to grow and compete with the big businesses that can already afford all these to deal with all these stupid regulations and things and so um, there's a whole lot of things going on with that's pushing jobs overseas. We have all this immigration coming in when we should be pushing for whites and uh, and Americans to be having babies, not be trucking in a whole bunch of illegals. We shouldn't be pushing birth control, free birth control and stupid stuff like that and pornography um, and all that. Um, um, if we make if we make babies, we make workers, especially if we raise the babies right. If we if we get the the reason why they move overseas is because of the cheaper labor. Because that's part of it. That's part of it. But there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of things that are making it tough for um, jobs to for businesses to employ th- people here and manufacture here and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So the there's these crazy trade agreements true. and all kinds of things. But I don't really know that much about it. I leave it up to Trump because he knows a lot more about it. He's been looking at it and talking about it forever, forever. Although I don't, I do think that it's, the tax should be focused more on people like you who are making the regular living. I think that's no, man. The more focused. No, oh. hey, hey, J- James, are you are you going to vote for Trump? Uh, I don't really. I don't think he's doing a. He's not really cheap. He's sort of like the same old stuff. Same old stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of let's call it inertia because a lot of people are fighting against him. But he's so refreshing in a lot of ways. So you should vote for him, man. The Saudi Arabia and the Julian Assange thing. I don't think that's. Uh, he's kind of. 
That's p that's picky stuff, man. I mean, you may have legitimate gripes, but that's picky stuff. That's no reason not to vote for him. I gotta go. James, is, it would be, have been even worse for anybody else to be in office in 2016. And then it's gonna be even worse if anybody else takes office in 2020. So don't be so petty. But I gotta go. James, talk to me again on Sunday or whenever you can. Call in again. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh... John, out of California, first time caller. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Hank? Doing fine. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Uh, I was just calling, and I wanted to comment on what's been going on on the college campuses. Yeah. Because I've been, you know, I've been on Twitter watching this whole thing on like for a while. I've been watching Nick Fuentes for a while. Okay, these so-called conservatives being confronted on their on their beta views, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Let's play... Hold on. John, let me play that Dan Crenshaw not answering the USS Liberty question. Because yeah, USS ahead, Liberty was a ship that got, uh, not sunk, but severely hit, and 34 people died, 121 or whatever, injured Americans by Israelis during the Six-Day War. And there's this whole dispute about whether it was uh, mistaken identity or they knew what they were doing and why they did it. So, here, let's play this. So, um, for those of you who are listening, you probably didn't have a clue what just happened. What I just played for you was on the college campuses, I guess it was college campus, Dan Crenshaw getting a Q&A, this young guy asked him about June 8th, 1967, that's the date that the USS Liberty was hit, a bunch of Americans died, uh, Israel apologized, paid money to the families, but there's, there's, there's doubt about what the real story is. So he start, he referenced that date, and just off of that, Dan Crenshaw's buddy, who's holding the mic, said, no, next question, you can't ask your question, because he knows about the USS Liberty and the USS Liberty is basically a popular talking point or question amongst the people that are that are against Israel or against us being so in bed with Israel. And so he doesn't even yeah, want to take the question. So that's a shame. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you know, because uh, the same question came up with uh, Charlie Kirk, right, doing a one yeah. turning point USA event. And uh, right away he swept it off, calling, oh, you're an anti semite You can't ask those questions. You know, this is all this is all a lie. What you... <laughs> Why you peddling uh, conspiracy theories? But in reality, you know Benson James. You you guys had him on the show before. Yeah. Uh, doing the gun the gun debate with uh, Destiny, right? Uh huh. So Benson James, he also had interviews with survivors from the USS Liberty, talking about what happened that day. Right. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, a lot of the survivors of the attack say that it was uh, they it was not a case of mistaken identity, and so who knows what really happened. And to me, oh, yeah, like, it's it's in the past. <laughs> so I don't really understand the whole thing, but at least answer the question. What's the problem? Just answer it. Anyways, man, I appreciate you, John. Yeah, but before I go... Go for it. I, I do want to know, because I've been watching this thing going off, and, and you know what? This movement is going to be the future moving forward. The boomers, they're done. They're not going to push anything moving forward anymore. That's it. Or the ideology is done, but the Zoomers are the ones that are going to carry the conservative movement forward. They're the real conservative people. They have the energy. They have, you know, they have intelligence. They're, some of them are a little bit autistic, so they're very intelligent, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'll be on the lookout for those kids, you know? All right, John, appreciate you, man. Take care. You, you too. Bye-bye. All right. Jesse out of Texas, Wendell out of Virginia. Sorry, guys, I can't get to you people. Call in on Sunday. On my channels, thehakereport.com slash show. I do Sundays on my channels. Of course, church on Sunday, um, a couple hours after that, 11 a.m. I'm on I'm on at 9 a.m. Pacific time, of right? right? And so, um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Happy Friday, everybody. Take care.